Welcome to Michael Uhila Presents Artist of the Month. And our Artist of the Month is Rebecca Nye. Welcome to the show. Hi, Michael. I understand you're an acrylic painter? That's true. I do paint acrylic quite a bit. It's my main medium right now. Okay, well tell us a little bit of how you started. Or... Sure, yeah. Uh, I started painting as when I was very young, actually about three years old or something. And my mom sent me to some kind of arts class because she herself is very talented. She is a good at dancing and singing, et cetera, but she can't paint to save her life. So she's like, uh, let me send her to graphic art because everything else she thinks she can teach me, then that stuck, and I've been painting ever since. Okay. So you started at what age was that? Uh, three. Three years old. Yeah. Okay. And was that your, you just started playing with it, or did you end up getting some training? Yeah, then when they sent me to art school uh, at community center, I did that for a few years, I think between 6 to 15 or something like that. And then this was in China, so school was kind of demanding. So I paused it a little to focus more on schoolwork and then picked it up again when I moved to Canada okay. when, a, a year or two later and then got more into it because they, when I just moved to Canada, language was a barrier and to express myself, I was really knowingly or unknowingly exploring another medium, which is art turned out to be the vehicle. Okay. Well, let's back up to when you were in China. Talk sure. a little bit about that and how that, uh, I don't know, for lack of a better, Chinese culture influence into your your artwork. Sure, yeah, I, I can certainly talk about it. And uh, as you can see, it's, um, it's a very strong influence for me. A lot of the subject matter, such as orchid um, or chrysanthemum, have um, deep meanings in the Chinese culture. Okay, well, like, give an example, for instance, like the orchids. What does that yeah, mean? Yeah, so Chinese orchids culture? usually symbolize a kind of willingness to for spiritual pursuit. So okay. the, the hermits, who, who they, they symbolize hermits who live in the, out in the mountains to explore themselves and find out who they are and like live a little distance from the main society, but have significant spiritual and uh, cultural contribution to the, to the society as well, to, okay. to, the, to the culture. And then the chrysanthemum? Chrysanthemum is a way of um, symbolizes, they, usually they symbolize men. So in Chinese culture, sometimes they use flowers to symbolize certain kind of men. Okay. So it's kind of different from here. So they, was, they would uh, symbolize people who, are, who would hold on to their principle, who are people of principle, who would not budge under influence. So for example, chrysanthemum is the latest bloomer. At, at least back then in China, before winter really hit. Okay. So they're kind of like the last man standing type of person, okay. personality, but also very wide kind of a pure flower. So they're kind of the, the guardians of a pure ideal. Okay. You would say that All right. as an example. All right, well, I just want to let the viewers know they're tuned in to Michael Uhila Presents, Artist of the Month, and our Artist of the Month is Rebecca Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're talking about her artwork and her influence from China. And then you talked about moving to Toronto. Let's talk a little bit about that. Sure. I actually moved to Vancouver as okay. the first step. So I Vancouver, spent okay. about three and a half years in Vancouver. Okay. I finished high school in Vancouver. So it's a very different environment from where I'm used to because I grew up in tropical China. Right. And Canada is kind of a big change right. from the tropical regions. and. Um, yeah, uh, so I had to learn the Western culture, North American culture, learn the language. So I spent a lot of time learning the language. A lot of focus is on that because, I mean, um, yeah, and then during that time, art became a way to express myself, and I participated in high school's art classes, right. significantly become one of my favorite classes, and then actually did a high school mural that's, it's about the size of one of these panels. Okay. And then it was part of the, and I have a very, very encouraging art teacher. Okay. And I went to the same high school as Michael J. Fox, by the way. Okay. You yeah. went to the same high school. Same as high school. So, um, I guess the the high school has kind of a tradition, some kind of encouraging people doing art. Anyway, so I have very encouraging high school art teachers, and they encouraged me to put together a portfolio to send it to admissions for, for our school. Okay. Yeah, and that's really 
this, I think uh, transitioning my art career in the sense I'm now doing something professional, pushing myself to finish, to present in front of a jury, and then to have them make a decision. Make a decision. <laughs> it was like, yeah. is this good enough? You know. Yeah, it is okay. good enough. <laughs> it was like, can, I, this, can we sell this? Can this make money? Or, yeah, or, okay. it's, it's, it's just so promised. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. like, this, this but that's what they do, right? Yeah, that's what they do. So, so. And then did you win? or? Uh, I, I did get admitted to Queen's University, the art department. OK. Um, towards the very end, I changed my mind. I decided to go to University of Toronto because I, I figured a big city probably suited me more. Okay. In Queens, if you don't know, Queens University is kind of in a small town in Canada. Okay. So that's a really small town, right? It's right. by the lake. So. Oh, that's good. It's, it, yeah. So I decided to go to Toronto instead and uh, studied physics and math instead of art. Right. So that's that kind of leads to uh, where where you ended up at. Stanford University, yes, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I managed to do well enough in college to right. get into Stanford. Yeah, right. So yeah. that you, physics, right? You studied that in you know, grad school for? Yeah, graduate school, I studied applied physics. OK. Yeah. And so you got two different, you know, one creative world and the other physical world. Yeah. OK, hold on. What do we have? Do we have the sketches? OK. You do sketches. I do do sketches. And we have a, we have, we have sketches ready. Sure. And let me find out if they're a GIFs demo. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. all so right, we'll go this. with that. Okay. Are they ready? Let's take it away. Yeah. So the, the yes. Yeah, so this is uh, some sketches. This is in Palo Alto, locally, some alley in the near work, and I, I usually take go for a walk, doing work to kind of take a break, and then start to develop this habit of doing some sketches. Okay. When I do the walk, cool. I remember when I was. Sketching this, someone is also playing, practicing violin in the same house. So it has this nice, idealistic feeling of an afternoon. All right. And the next one? Oh, I did this set in Japan. So I did some, pe I went to Japan, um, I think 2012. Yeah. Okay. Actually, last year, 2013, in, um, in February. So I just had some time, people watching, did some sketches of people. Okay. All right. Next one. Yeah, this is also from Japan. I believe this is in a coffee house and where they have this cafe where the community gathered, read, do crafts, so we're not wait for the train. Oh, okay. So they're sitting there for a while. Oh yeah, this is at the bottom of Grand Canyon. So again in two thousand thirteen I took a trip to hike down to the to Havasupai, which is the land of the Grand Canyon people. This is their reservation and they have really beautiful creeks and um Scenery and waterfalls. I did some sketches there as well. Okay. Yeah, again, this is in Palo Alto. No. Okay. Yeah. You spent a lot of time in Palo Alto. I did. I, I came here to come to Stanford and then <laughs> lived in Palo Alto. Oh, okay. And worked in Palo Alto also. So I oh, spent a lot of time in Palo Alto. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, these are some orchids. I, as I say, I really like orchids right. and then do some sketches of orchids as a study and also. A different way to explore the subject. In a Why does an artist way. sketch? Uh, I mean, I believe different artists have different reasons. Why do you sketch? sketch? So um, the reason I sketch is, in a, in a way, it's easy to carry medium. I can carry a book with me and just okay. do it wherever, especially when I go on trips or um, when I'm taking a break okay. or something like that. And Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, another orchid that I did. In a way to study for the series over there, I had okay. some Okay, so this series. led to yeah, that, led to those works. paintings okay. as well. All right. So <clears throat> really. And what is this? Yeah, this again is at the bottom of Grand Canyon. So this is the it's a thunderstruck grove of trees. So they have a lot of uh, thunderstorm, and sometimes they hit trees, and then the trees will burn and become these dead branches. So okay. The canyons in the backdrop, branches Sounds good. on forehead, foreground. Foreground. Yeah, it's another tree. I like trees a lot, so okay. I, I do trees. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. And this uh, again, street people. I, I took a trip to San Francisco to meet up with some friends, and then on my trip, I took my sketchbook and drew people. All right. Huh? All right, if you just tuned in, Artist of the Month, Rebecca, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're talking a little bit about you were in China, then you went to Canada. That's right. And then you ended up 
at Stanford, Stanford yes. graduate of physics, which department again? Uh, applied physics department. Applied physics yeah. department. And I did a master's degree in applied physics. And you got a master's degree in applied physics, and you're a painter. That's right. I, okay. and I, I love painting. Okay. Yeah. So. My passion. Your passion. Mm -hmm. So why do you continue on with this uh, medium of acrylic? Why not other, why not oil? Why not water paint? Or um, I experimented with a number of medium so I, I really like pastel but I'm allergic to it so I can <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind so, of allergy you start sneezing or scratching or I start sneezing difficulty breathing oh, okay. several things so, so right. I can can't really so do you can't, it. no pastel yeah no pastel and I try watercolor I, I like watercolor my problem with with paper they're kind of fragile they discolor okay. after a while so it's a lot I mean I, I like to have it on camera so it's easier to carry right. around I don't have to pay as much attention and also like to uh, paint over and over, sometimes right. a little rough on one spot and okay. water will break. So it's really did that. And uh, so, yeah, so they tried watercolor, didn't really stick, and then I never really ventured into oil. The reason is that when I really seriously got into painting, I had limits of space. So I was starting it off in my bedroom. As a student, I didn't have much space and it was uh, a practical reason yeah right? practical it all because fast. you were like it was mm -hmm. like i'm gonna try this or imaginative it was more because this is the only space i got this is, and i'm allergic to that right yeah, exactly. so, okay <laughs> all right i just yeah. want to make sure i was listening okay go yeah, ahead. yeah practical reasons and I, I couldn't do something that's oil it was a little toxic there was back then I, I believe they have low toxin oil now but okay. back then it really wasn't available so i end up doing a lot more acrylic and really liked it because it's a very versatile medium in a sense it you can combine both technique you can add medium to give it a very thick and 3d kind of texture okay. but you can also thin it down a lot and create wash and wash type of texture kind of like watercolor somewhat so i play with transparency and translucency a lot okay during my painting so acrylic really helps I think other paints do that too, but okay. So you really stuck with it. acrylic. Yeah, and I really now. enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, so you enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, are the okay? So we have some more of your slides. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look. Okay. Yeah. Walk so, us through this. So this is from the Antelope Canyon. It's um, it's on the Nav in the Navajo Nation, and I did a graduation trip there. It's a very kind of transcendental kind of experience, and really stuck with me and. Uh, that did this painting to kind of, in a way, to symbolize the cave in Plato's analogy, okay. how the, the people need to step up and explore themselves and eventually step out of the cave. Is that the Republic? I don't, I'm not sure <laughs> okay. exactly which it is. And, All right, what's yeah. this? So yeah, this one I did in, um, on a beach in Cuba. So I'm, I'm Canadian, I travel to Canadians travel to Cuba. Okay. I'm, I'm allowed to say this on TV, but Canadians do, <laughs> do travel to Cuba. It's, That's uh, cool. You don't play a, hockey? I, was, no. I, I don't play hockey. Okay. They, they think I'm too small. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. So, Cuba. So, yeah, Cuba. I took a picture of the scene. So so the, the lady there was actually um, a gentleman, but I later on took some liberties when I painted it. And then, okay. Yeah, did this. So these are the, the set back there. Back you, so this, behind um, us, yeah. yeah, this this set behind us. I did this when I was sending the other pictures also, so they can, yeah. Okay. I did this when I was fired and unemployed, and um, I do this to symbolize perseverance in a sense of this type of tree is very common where I grow up. Again, I grew up in tropical China, so this this banyan tree is a very common tree. So they do it, they have really big branches and they will drop roots from their branches. And when the roots hit the ground, they become another trunk. Okay. So the tree can get very big. All right. So legend says, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, so legend says that um, Singapore was covered by one banyan tree at one point. So it's, it can get very big. And then in a sense, they also can always provide me with some kind of comfort okay. to, ever since I was small, I, took refuge in this type of trees. It may sound funny, but yeah. really have connection with this type of trees. And I designed the symbols here in the Gautic style to again symbolize perseverance. Okay. That's why I have them in the root and in the trunk. Beautiful. Yeah, so there's a wave from, it's a reef 
from the, the Hawaii. And I took you to go with the chrysanthemum back there. Oh, okay. Yes. So that's the one behind me. Yeah, yeah. that's the one show behind you. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can show it later. All right. Yeah. And this is um, spring orchid. So this type of orchid that smells very, very good. And it's my grandmother's cultivation. I took a picture and uh, I painted it up and I gifted it to a friend for his marriage. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and this again is from the graduation trip in Hawaii. It is, it's, it's is that essentially, a lagoon or a kind of? Uh, it's a uh, it's a waterfall, a creek that goes directly into this ocean. Okay. Yeah, so it is uh, kind of as just as seeing a quick uh, impressionist try to play with the impressionist style, okay. the creator scene and the feeling out of it. And this is the feather. It's kind of finger sensing as in the air, kind of how we kind of all floating like feather in the air, the impermanence, the transcendental nature of our experience. That's okay. that's kind of a recurring theme in a lot of my paintings. There you go. And yeah, there's another feather to see a lot of times we may think we're solid and very permanent. We actually always in transition, transition from yeah. here to there. <laughs> Yeah, and this is um, work in progress of the painting I'm going to demo later. Demo so this later. is the first. So they'll get to see a, yeah. a live demonstration of that. So that's true. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is the second stage. I drew the, draw the outline, did some. You colors. did this like two weeks ago, right? We talked yeah. about this, right? Yeah. When, okay. when you came to visit me, it was doing okay, just the outline the right. stage, and then gradually shading. Okay. Right, a little more shaded, and yeah. then eventually get to the stage where I'm going to demo. Okay. Yeah. And then there's you. That's me working on the, the banyan trees. Well, I, I have triplets. Oh. Uh, no, I actually don't. I, <laughs> I didn't need all of them, did I? I just no, made one. No, oh, okay. no. No, actually, I photoshopped this, took multiple pictures of myself, and put them on the same Beautiful. shot. Like kind that. of for fun. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, so people just tuned in. This is Artist of the Month, Rebecca Nguyen. And we're going to do... Are we ready for that demonstration? We are. Okay. So you are going to walk over there. Sure, yeah. Let me, let me do the demonstration. All right. Yeah. So I, this is the same, sh same painting that we're working on now that I sh we showed in the, oh, the slideshow. Oh, Sorry. I'm going to get started. Yeah, you go ahead while yeah. that's running. Sure, it's yeah. okay. So I paint around the edges really for so it's easier to frame. The more options for framing, you can go with frame or without. Just, just to give Why it without a framing? Sometimes, you know, frames are expensive. <laughs> oh, okay. And, or, um, Another practical reason. I yeah, can't I have a lot of practical reasons. No I'm sorry to disappoint you. If no, it's okay. You're looking I'll for transcendental reasons. I'm full of I'll go steal reasons. some from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. So it's just for people so that they know you started this two weeks ago? Yeah, I started this two weeks ago. Two weeks I've been ago. working okay. on it. Yeah, so sometimes I go into very detail, but sometimes like I let it go a little loose. It really depends on the on the feel, like the the stage of the painting. I usually like to start a little loose and then refine the details needed. And sometimes I don't. Sometimes right. I just leave it loose and spontaneous. It really depends. Depends. Yeah. So this, so right now I'm at the very, one of the final stages of the painting. That's why I'm using small brushes to kind of add on the details. Uh, when I was just started learning painting, one of the teachers I had used to scold the kids when we use small brushes. But later on I, I broke free from his scolding and decided and realized that really the, the essence a lot of times of a painting is in the details. And I really enjoy working on the details.
so shading and uh, kind of make it a little more smooth due to transition. Those things. And finishing up here. Of just yeah. So some, sometimes I don't talk as much when I paint because I hyper concentrate, and that's uh, I guess that's not not very fun doing a demo, right? So keep talking. Just a few to sense, and I would like to step back and look at the painting to kind of see where it is from a distance and close up. I try to create a feeling where you can get something out of the painting, whether you're at a distance or you're getting close to the painting. You like offer a little bit of everything for people. And through this type of paintings in this series, this series I started off I got inspiration from uh, the, the same trip to Hawaii. I guess I actually got a lot of inspiration from that trip. Is um, there's the volcano. The, the volcano of the big island in Hawaii, and it has the, this volcanic field that you can hike on. This was, um, I forgot which year, probably 1970-something eruption. That it, it, this used to be lava, now it's kind of rock. So I, again, it's this type of transition between hot and cold, and um, I mean, something very passionate and lively and something we usually perceive as less and as kind of dead pain as rock. So it's like an in-between stage of things and the flow that really, I think, really speaks to me. And another thing with this is I try to create some kind of storytelling through the abstraction. So although it's abstract theme, I try to use contrasting colors to give people a sense so the viewer can like have the liberty to create stories in their mind when they look at these paintings. They can they can create stories however they want because each people is each person is different. Some people may see it as the the dynamic between evil and good. Some people may see it as the dynamic between I mean love and uh, love and rational thinking, you know, like people, people see different things and that's something I want to create and introduce in my paintings. There's no really a right answer or wrong answer. People can do, can interp interpret it to suit their experience and their, their background. Okay. Um, Again, painting on the edges a little to kind of give it a kind of transition. And let me see, a little more here. So I'm gonna step here and like paint around the edges here. Again, I really enjoy working on the details. So it's something I constantly do is to go back and forth between the details. Yeah, and I use this type of palette that prevents paint from getting wet, I mean getting dry. Because if you, I don't know if you know, but with acrylic paint, if it gets dry, it starts to peel and it's not very, it's not like watercolor where you can just add water to it and make it workable again. So you need to do a few different things. And I have them in this little tubes again to prevent them from drying out. So yeah, allow my So yeah, when I paint on this, I can really get lost in pa the painting process. Because this series, I don't know why, it's also somewhat therapeutic to me. I get into this very deep, almost meditative state where I feel lost in the colors in the painting, and I really enjoy that. In, in a sense, this is why I keep painting, because I really enjoy this state where it's on one hand expressive, on the other hand also very self-inspecting, introspective.
Great. Um, so there, just to what kind of details that I come on. And also just try to establish a routine where I do a little bit of art every single day. Sometimes I have more time, so I do a few hours or even eight hours. And then sometimes I don't have as much time, so I just um, I sketch. Yeah, it really, a lot of them are driven by practical reasons. And again, I'm gonna step back and take a look at this and then see. So here, I want to add a little color here, but I'm not sure because I also like this stroke of green. So I think I'm gonna leave it like that and work on some other details. Hmm. Yeah, let's do a little bit of this. Smooth it out a little. Yeah, at the final stage, it's really the, the fine things. Sometimes it may not seem to be a lot, but kind of just patiently working on this can create some very interesting effects when it works out. So I'm going to use a different shade of green for the, for the corner over there. And just uh, give it a little more. Yeah, so I spend significant time mixing my colors and also again play with the transparency. So a lot of these colors, some, some of these colors are transparent, some are translucent. So I usually kind of not have a memory of what they are, kind of a feeling. So I can work with them fairly easily. Is this and I'm going to shade it out a little. That's a nice shade and I'm going to wash it. 